For Session Update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Lawmakers have until midnight tonight to take their final votes on any pending deals to deal with the $900 million surplus. So far, Senate and House negotiators have agreed upon a $259 million tax reduction bill. They have also agreed to additional spending, but total amounts are not yet finalized. We do know that $35 million is available for broadband expansion in rural Minnesota and that there is additional funding to launch programs curbing racial economic disparities. Senate Majority Leader Tom Bach allowed an impromptu availability in his office to answer questions from the press just about an hour ago. Here's what the Majority Leader had to say. And it still couldn't happen. And I, I think we're approaching that place again where we were leading up to the 2008 uh, uh, transportation bill. And remember, uh, that was a bipartisan effort. Uh, Governor Plenty, then Governor Plenty, vetoed the bill, uh, ended up being overridden by uh, the legislature. So I, I think we're approaching that period again. I, I think it seems like the speaker has put himself in s such a rigid position that uh, it, it's hard for, I think, the House to be in a place where they can get to what they what they say we need, $600 million a year each year for the next 10 years. So barring that long-term 10-year transportation, would you bet on a smaller one-year band-aid for this year? Is that something that the Senate would find palatable at all? Or if you're not going to do the 600, it's not worth it, given Dayton's public statements on it? Well, our position has always been we, we want a long-term solution. Uh, I'm not just not interested, haven't been interested in something that just allows people to hit the campaign trail and say, hey, we resolved the state's uh, transportation infrastructure problems when everybody, when they push that green button and vote, is going to know that that is not true. But what people will purport to say on the campaign trail, when they push the button, they're going to know what they're going to say is not true. And uh, so I'm reluctant to create that narrative for, for something that legislators on the campaign trail are going to misrepresent what really happened here in the final day. Uh, so the speaker and I have talked. The speaker has requested if I would consider a one-time uh, proposal. He's asked me if I'd be willing to do $300 million of one-time surplus money uh, and be willing to do some bonding for transportation. Uh, the bonding part goes without being said. Uh, the Senate's bonding bill that passed, uh, or that did not pass the Senate, uh, that fell short, was north of $300 million a year in transportation bonding, trunk highway and GL bonds for local roads and bridges. So, uh, but I wasn't able to get that passed. So, uh, the speaker would like to put something together that includes bonding and one-time cash that he, he told me would like to reach to $600 million a year. The, the, the problem I have with it is that the passage of it will be misrepresented to the voters. Well, transportation and bonding be in the, I mean, if the deal comes together on transport, whether it's one time, some bonding, I mean, would that be in one single bill? The speaker has asked me uh, this morning, we've had a, a couple of ex personal meetings about Real ID, we've had a couple of personal meetings about bonding and transportation. Uh, he's asked that I consider putting $300 million of one-time money into the bonding bill. Uh, my response back to him was, uh, I, uh, I can't pass this bill until he sends it to me. It has to be a house file. Uh, it's going to have geo bonds in it. So my response back to him was, uh, I think Representative Thiessen has been reluctant to do uh, one-time spending for transportation, uh, you know, a one-year mandate of $600 million that you really ought to talk to Representative Thiessen about whether Representative Thiessen would support uh, $300 million of transportation one-time money in a bonding bill. What I think really doesn't matter uh, because until it gets to me, uh, I can't take it up. Uh, so uh, I've told him multiple times yesterday and today, he's got to figure it out over in the house that uh, 
doesn't matter what I agree to. If you can't get it out of the house, you can't get it to me. Is your fear not that only that it becomes a campaign tool? Is that it maybe lets the pressure off for a long-term deal next year or beyond? Well, it is, it is one of the things that concerns me. Uh, everyone, everybody here understands the need. And the problem with the one-time thing is it will be misrepresented to the voters as the problem is solved. And it may take a number of years uh, before all the construction authorized by this one-time infusion of cash before the highway cones go away and only the public will then find out, well, geez, they never fixed it. Uh, so I do think it will set back the idea of a comprehensive proposal, long-term proposal. It'll set that effort back uh, because the public's going to be told something that's not true. But wouldn't it help your candidates in November, too, if you can show that you put some transportation money out there? Wouldn't it do the same thing for you as it would for Dallas people? I don't, I don't think of it as an election issue. I actually think of it as what is the right decision to make to invest in public infrastructure. I realize a lot of people are thinking about the election, uh, and it's my job to run the, the, the Senate caucus election. But the public wants our transportation infrastructure fixed. And I think to pass something that, that, that will misrepresent itself as us accomplishing the job is not accurate. And I think it's misleading the public. Would it be good for the campaign? Likely, likely would be. But it wouldn't be honest with the taxpayers or with the people that use the system. And I, I, so I think that's, uh, I don't want to do it because it's good campaign politics. I want to do a transportation package because it's the right investment in public industry. This is a follow-up on another question. Would, but is it 600 million better than zero? Sure, 200 million is better than zero. Okay. Has the speaker backed away from uh, you know the proposal that they rolled out, I think, late last week to raise license cab fees? Uh, I've asked them if that was still something on the table that might be included in a bonding bill, I, I haven't been able to get a yes or no. What, what he's told me is they'll discuss it in their caucus. They've caucused a number of times since then. I don't know if they've discussed that, but he has not put that on the table as one of the pieces of uh, a potential transportation article in the bonding bill. Hey, on, the bu on the budget in general, have you taken the governor's temperature? Is he comfortable with where it stands now if you would send this budget bill to him? Well, I hope so. I mean, it, it doesn't invest in some of, uh, on, in everything that he wanted. I mean, it it reaches, uh, and, and of course they don't have the document yet to, to show them what's all in there. Uh, it's still at the revisers. Uh, so I don't have it. I only know what's in there because I've been working on it for three days here. Uh, around the uh, it represents full funding of, a, of some of his priorities. I mean, that he wanted uh, $25 million in pre-K uh, and $55 million in the tails. That's in there. Uh, so that's fully funded. It uh, goes a long way towards funding uh, his, his request relative to direct care at our mental hospitals at uh, Anoka and St. Peter. Goes more than halfway to what he wanted to get there. I actually Considering uh, we went into conference with a with a house with a zero spend general fund uh, where we started, I think we actually have a pretty good product, and I uh, I did tell the governor today that I think we're sending two pretty good bills. Uh, I think we're sending a pretty good tax bill. I think when you look at the votes on the floor of the house, uh, bipartisanly they felt that was a pretty good bill. I think you'll see similar votes uh, in, in the Senate on the tax bill. I think you'll see similar votes on the budget bill in the House and the Senate. I think they're pretty good bills. The budget bill doesn't, uh, but, but were we considering where the Senate started with where the House came into conference, I think the Senate did a pretty remarkable job uh, moving them up from a zero, geo, or zero general fund spend. Uh, and much of it reflects the governor's priorities. But that means that you will be Last question. you will be sending we still have to talk about bonding. Last question. You will just, we'll be sending him a budget bill and a tax bill that you're not sure he will sign, which sounds eerily similar to last year. 
Well, I mean, I can't speak for the governor. I mean, I, I mean the, the reason that the Constitution gives him 14 days to review them once he receives them is because, you know, as these big bills come together, uh, I don't have the bill summary yet, right? And uh, he certainly maybe even doesn't have the spreadsheet yet that, okay. that I have, and I can assemble because our Senate staff we're, we're keeping track of all the pieces, so I probably have more information on what's in there than I know I do than the governor does. Uh, I just know I'm comfortable that it's a good bill. I'm going to ask the governor to sign it. I'm going to ask him to sign the tax bill also. That certainly is the decision he makes is his to make. Uh, might there be uh, something in the tax bill he doesn't like? Uh, there's things in the tax bill I don't like. Uh, there's things in the budget bill that could have been much better. There's some things uh, in the budget bill that got dropped out that I wish could have stayed in. Uh, but uh, governing with divided government is really hard. And the taxpayers decided to send me a Republican House in 2014, and I'm doing the best I can in a very tough environment uh, to provide a product that the governor can support that reflects the needs of Minnesota. And it's not, if I could have written it myself, or I think if I could have written it with a Democratic House, probably would have looked a little different. Uh, but that's not what the voters sent me to work with. Bonding, are you going to send them a tax bill before you're sure that there is going to be a bonding bill? The tax bill is now. I, I have given no thought to that. Uh, what I'm a little cons concerned about, or at least I was concerned about last night, is all four of the major bills, the, the bonding bill, the transportation bill, the budget bill, and the tax bill, all are house files. So I can't act on them until I get them. So fortunately, the tax bill came over pretty early. And the other three, how much debate there might be on the floor, I'm not sure. Uh, but we can't take them until we get them. So, uh, and you know, I mean, everybody, this is the this is the point of the session where people start using the scud word, right? And is the Senate going to lop something over to the House before they go home, or is the House going to lop something over? To the Senate before they go home and certainly the speaker and I both have vehicles lined up to do that <laughs> good leaders do that I mean you put things in place so that you get all you have all your options on the table as you approach the last the last night so uh, him and I actually kind of jokingly talked about that this morning that we both have them lined up and as leaders I think we both expect each other to have that done and might there even be some coordination between us <laughs> Uh, to move things back and forth a little faster than the otherwise might happen as part of the reason for lining those kind of things up. It's the reason that I lined up a house, I grabbed a house transportation file that came over. In the event a grand deal could come together on transportation, I would have a house file that I could send over while he's still dealing with the budget bill and the tax bill uh, that are house files and the bonding bill that is a house file so that I could share some of the work. And, and speed up the process. So. Are you going to get a bonding bill? We're done. I, you know, it's up to the house. It really is up to the house. It's got to be a house file. There's nothing. I don't have a vehicle. I, don't, I had asked the speaker uh, more than a month ago to send me a bonding vehicle in the event we couldn't find a deal, but he was unwilling to do it. Do you have any more meetings for planning? Yeah, we got to go. No, not right now. You were just watching an availability with the Senate Majority Leader. The Senate and the House are scheduled to.